Hey guys, welcome to ThinkX Academy. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss the subset sum problem. So let's first discuss what exactly this problem is all about. So in this uh, problem, you can see there are two words, subset and sum. So what we are going to do is we are going to write a set and basically we are going to write a set of numbers so we, are, we have taken a set of three numbers in this case. So a subset will be, so if we want to write the subsets of this set. So this is our whole set and now I wish to write the subsets. So the subset will be 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2 and so on. So basically subset is the uh, combination of sum or all the elements of this whole set. So we are going to take a set, a whole set and we are going to take a set. Uh, so I'm going to write here some numbers in this set. So let's suppose we have a set of integers and here are the integers. So you will be given a set and a number and we call this number as sum. So let's choose any random number. So I'm choosing 9 as a random number. So in this problem, you will be given a set and a number sum. What you have to do is you will have to pick up those subsets such that if you will add all the elements of this subset, it will give you the sum. That's why this problem is known as the subset sum problem. So in this, if this is our problem statement, you can see that the answer is, so I want to pick up the element. So if we pick up four and five and we make a subset like this, we can see that the sum of these two numbers will give us this number. There is one more one uh, subset which is 2 comma 3 comma 4. So here you can see that these are the two subsets and if you will add all the elements of these subsets you will get this number sum. So this is our problem. The problem says that you will have to write a function and you will provide a set and a number to that function and that function will basically return if there exists a subset which satisfies the required problem. So we will have to write a function here. So before writing the implementation of the function, I first want to discuss how the function's logic will work. So to discuss the basic logic that we are going to use to implement our function, I'm going to take a very simple, a very simple set. So let's suppose this is our set. So to find a subset, which basically if you will add all the elements of that subset, it will give us this number sum equals to nine. So let's say that in this, in this case, you want to find a subset such that the sum will be equal to 5. So we know that we want to find a specific subset. To find a specific subset, first we will have to just uh, do something so that we can get all the possible subsets of this whole set. So how can we do that? So we know that the subsets contain the elements of the set or it cannot contain any one of these or if you pick up an element from the set, there are two possibilities. One is it is included in the subset and the second possibility is it is excluded in the subset. 
So if I want to create a program that will pick up a specific subset, first I will have to just record all the possible subsets of this set. So what we are going to do is we are going to pick an element. We will pick up all the elements one by one and then we are going to include it in the set and then we are going to create another subset and we are not going to include that element in the subset. So let's pick up an, an element from our set. So let's pick up one as the element. So I can say that there are two possibilities. Either you can include this number in this subset or you can not include or exclude in the subset. Right, so you can see that these are the two possible subsets of this whole set. So now once you have included one in the subset, now we are going to move to the next element. So the next element is 2. So what we are going to do here is, in this sub problem, you can also see that we have two possibilities. First, we can include 2 in the subset or we can exclude it in the subset. Since we are including 1 in the previous problem, we are going to include it in both the subsets and now we are going to pick up the next number which is 2. So in the first case, we will include it in the subset. In the second case, we are not going to include it in the subset. And similarly, we are going to do this with this problem. So here I will include the 2 in the subset and here I will not include 2 in the subset. Then we are going to come here and now I will pick up the next element. The next element is 3. So now here you can see that 1 and 2 is fixed. So I have two choices with 3. I can include it in the subset or I can not include it in a subset. Similarly, I, I will include it in this one and not include in this one. And here also I am going to do the same. So you can see that these are the two possibilities and using these two possibilities we are calculating the sub problems. So you can observe here that here this is our main problem and all of them are sub problems and these sub problems are basically categorized into including in the subset and excluded in the subset. So we know that this will be our approach to get all the possible subsets of this set. So you can see that when you do, uh, when you will implement this approach, you can get the subsets of this set. So you can see one is the subset of this set. Similarly, one comma two, one comma two comma three, then one comma three, even. Uh, a phi set or a set with known elements is also a set. So this is also a subset. 2 is a subset, 3 is a subset and 2 comma 3 is also a subset. So this is our step 1. So in step 1, we are going to pick up an element from the given set one by one and then we are going to classify it into two sub problems. And for that, we are going to use recursion. And in recursion, we are basically going to divide, we are going to uh, go recursively by picking an element from the n minus 1th position to the 0th position. And whenever we pick up an element, we are going to make two recursive calls. In the first recursive call, we will say that we are including this element and in the second recursive call I will say that I am not including it in the subset. So this is our step 1. In the step 1 we have uh, all the subsets, all the possible subsets of the given set. But our problem was to find only those subsets such that if you will add the elements of these subsets it will give you the sum equals to 5. 
So as you can see that in th these, in all of these, if you will pick up this subset, so 2 plus 3 will give you 5. And you can see that it is the only subset which will give you the sum equals to 5. So whenever you will encounter such a subset, you will just return true. So step 2 is to find, find appropriate subset. find appropriate subset. So we will have to perform some algorithm such that it will pick up the required subset. And whenever that subset, the required subset is found, and we know the required subset is the subset such that if you will add the elements, it will give you the sum. So whenever the function will find such a subset, it will return true. And that is basically our subset sum problem. So now let's see how we can find the appropriate subset. So now we are going to make use of this variable sum to know whether we have found the appropriate subset while doing recursion. So while doing recursion, I will provide this variable at each function calls. So in this function, in the first function call, I will give it the value 1 comma the sum. So I will give the sum value to this, to the function calls itself. And when we will do that, we can see that if you are including 1 in this subset, then we know that the rest of the elements will be 5 minus 1. So now the value of sum will become 4. So it is basically, so if you see the solution of this problem, we know that 4 and 5 is the solution and 2, 3, 4 is also the solution. So let's consider this solution. In this solution, we know that if we will pick up the uh, this 2 element, then the sum of the rest of the elements will be 9 which is our sum minus this element which is 7. So when we will pick the next element 3 we are going to subtract it from the given sum and we will keep doing that until and unless we have picked all the elements from our given set. So now we will pick up the element 4. So when we will pick up the element 4 I will subtract from it. And you can see that if you have got the appropriate subset, the value of sum will be equal to 0 because now you have included all the, all the elements and by subtracting it, you can get 0. So if I will include the sum in all these function calls and whenever I will include an element, I will subtract it from the sum variable and at some position, you can see that in these positions, the value of sum will become 0 at some point. So you can see that at this point the value of sum will be equal to 0 because the sum was equal to 5. So when you include 2, the sum will equal to 5 minus 2 which is 3. When you will include 3, it will become 3 minus 3 equals to 0. So whenever the value of sum will be equal to 0, we are going to return true. So I am going to write here this logic. So if the value of sum is equals to equals to 0, we are going to return true. As you can see in this whole problem, we have proceeded two steps. In the first step, we are going to make a recursive calls. Uh, we are going to make two recursive calls for these two sub problems. And in the step two, I will just uh, write the sum function and whenever we will include any element in the subset, we are just going to subtract it from the sum. And since at some point, since we have included all the elements, which means the value of n will be equal to 0. And if at that particular position, if you have picked all the elements 
and the value of sum is not equal to zero then at that stage you are going to return false so you can see that this is one condition and this is the another one condition so in this solution you can see that if we take this element 2 you can see that in this solution 2 is included in the set but in this set you can see that 2 is not there so this means that if any of this condition is true then we are going to return true and you can see that if we pick up the element 4 4 is there in this subset and it is also there in this subset so we are going to use an OR operator between these conditions so here you can see that it will return true and this will return false so if any one of the condition is true it is going to be true and even if this condition is false this condition will be true and it will get, then it doesn't matter what uh, this value will be it can be false or true so this is true so it has found an element and in this manner we are just going to use OR operator so if any of these sub problems evaluates true value that means we have found the subset and now we will return true so this is the basic working behind the behind this whole problem this is how we are going to solve this problem by introducing these two steps and we know how to stop recursion we know we can stop recursion by returning true and false when these two conditions are met so now I am going to erase this and now I am going to write the whole function in C++ language and then we are going to draw the recursion tree of this example Alright, so let's write the function itself. So I know the return type of the function will be true or false, so I'm going to write here bool. So let's name the function as s is ss. ss basically means s subset sum. So I'm going to use a shortcut here. We are going to provide this function, this set, and we will also provide the number of elements inside this set so we can see that in this case the number of elements n is equals to 6 and then we are going to provide this variable sum to this function so now we are going to write the base conditions And base conditions are basically conditions that will stop this this recursion and we know that the base conditions are that if the value of sum will be equal to equal to zero then we are going to return true and if the value of n is equals to equals to zero that means we have picked up all the elements and the value of sum is not equal to zero that means we have not found the required subset and we are going to return false here so this is how we are going to write the base conditions and these conditions will stop recursion by returning the value true or false at each and every recursive step so next you can see here that there are some numbers in this set which are greater than the sum so we are going to ignore them because since these are already greater than sum then they cannot pr uh, provide us the required subset so i am going to write here thus that if the value at set n minus 1 position is greater than the sum then i will just return is ss set now we will ignore that element so we will go on to the previous element which is n minus 1th element and here I am going to provide the sum 
So now I'm going to return. So now at this step, we are going to make the recursive call. And we know that there are two recursive calls for two sub problems. One problem says to include the last element or exclude the last element which we have already seen before. So I'm just going to write the return statement here for these two conditions. So is SS since we are including the last element uh, that means we are going to subtract the element from the sum. So I am going to provide the set here, the n minus 1 position and now since I am including the last element, I will just make the value of sum as sum minus the element of this of the set at the n minus 1th position. And I am going to write the second condition and since I know that any of these conditions is true, that means that we have found the appropriate subset, so it will return true. So that's why I'm using OR. So the second condition is that if you are not including the last element, we are not going to subtract it from the sum. So this is basically our whole program that will basically return true or false if it has found the required subset. So let's draw the recursive tree of this whole problem. So here is the program and now I'm going to draw the recursive or the recursion tree here. So first you can see that the value of n is equals to 6, the value of sum is equals to 9. So our problem, we are going to make a call to uh, this function using the number of elements and the sum. So initially the sum, the value of sum is 9 and n is 6. Now we are going to break this problem into two sub problems. So this is basically our whole problem. So when we are going to make it n equals to 6, then you can see that it will come at this step and it is going to divide it into two sub problems. And at this position, it will pick up the n minus 1th element. So n minus 1th element, if I will write the index positions here, so n minus 1, 1th element is the element at the fifth position. So this will make a call to the fifth, to the element stored at the fifth position. So in this case, I'm going to write here excluding and this is the sub problem that includes the number. So since we are excluding the number, we will not subtract it from the sum. And here we are including this, this number. So I'm going to write here 9 minus 5 equals to 4. Sorry, this should not be 4. And the reason is because we are picking the element at the nth position. Nth position is 5, so the element is 2. So 9 minus 2 equals to 7, so this, this should be 7. And when you will do this, it will again break these, the, these into two sub problems. Now the value, you can see that the value of n is 5 at this step. At this step, it is 6. At this step, it will be 4. And now we are going to divide this sub problem and the value of n is 4. So let's pick up the previous element. You can see that the previous element is 5 here. So when we will uh, exclude it, it will have no impact on this number. But if we will include it, so if we will include this number 5, then we are going to write here 9 minus 5 which is equals to 4 and we are going to do this again and again and these will go on and on until and unless these any of these two conditions occur so at some stage it will be able to find 
when the sum will be equal to equal to zero. So you can see that the sum is actually getting subtracted and we have already seen uh, why the sum equals to equals to zero and this return true what this statement actually means. We have discussed this whole statement before. We know that if the value of sum equals to equals to zero then we have found the appropriate subset. And so this is the subset sum problem. And here we have just made use of recursion and we are just dividing the whole problem into two sub problems. And you can see the whole logic behind this we have discussed in the uh, previous example when we were using the set one, two and three.